It began like any other interstellar encounter. A fast-moving object detected on a clear night, catalogued as three atlas, and logged by observatories across the planet. But something about this one felt different. It wasn't just the speed, though. At nearly 60 kilometers, says, it was flying fast enough to escape the solar system forever. It wasn't just the size. Its nucleus, estimated between three and seven minutes wide, made it the largest interstellar object ever tracked. No, what set this apart was subtler. A scientist began plotting its trajectory. A crack formed in our certainty. The orbit didn't fit. It wasn't a matter of noise or data glitches. It was a measurable deviation, an orbital shift that couldn't be explained by gravity, solar radiation, or even violent jets of gas erupting from its surface. Something had changed its course and the cause wasn't natural. That's when astronomers began whispering what they didn't want to believe. This is happening again. Just like Oumuamua before it, Three Atlas is rewriting the laws we thought governed the universe. And this time we can't look away. In orbital dynamics, every object plays by the same rules. Gravity dominates, gas outgassing complicates, but nothing moves in space without a traceable push. Yet when orbital modelers laid the path of Three Atlas against reality, something snapped. The math fell short. The simulated trajectory, calculated with extreme precision using gravitational inputs, radiation pressure, and gas ejection estimates, no longer matched the observed data. Over time, the deviation grew, not wildly, but steadily. This wasn't a software error. It was confirmed by observatories across the globe. From Mount A to Lila, every measurement aligned, but not with the model. With the anomaly. Residuals, those tiny gaps between predicted and actual positions, weren't random. They were systematic, always leaning in the same direction, creating a clear divergence that no gas jets could explain. Even when scientists added every known non-gravitational force to their simulations, they still couldn't account for it. The conclusion? Something invisible was pushing it. And it was doing so in a way that completely breaks the current playbook. When the James Webb Space Telescope locked onto three atlas, astronomers hoped the object's coma would reveal the answers. Instead, it handed them a bigger mystery. Normally, a comet's tail is dominated by water vapor, with carbon dioxide playing a minor role. But 3 Atlas reversed that completely. The CO2 to water ratio was 8.1, a number so far outside the norm it stunned comet scientists. Worse, even this intense outgassing couldn't account for the force needed to shift a multi-billion ton object. The gas jets were active, yes, but not active enough. Nickel emissions spiked sharply, but iron was mysteriously absent, an unprecedented asymmetry in interstellar chemistry. Meanwhile, the dust loss rate was relatively modest, powerful but again not enough. The comet was erupting, yes, but not explosively. And so the same question kept coming back. What was pushing this giant off course? If sunlight, jets and dust can't explain it, then something else must be at work, and that something doesn't look like nature as we know it. The feeling in the astronomy community was eerily familiar. In 2017, another visitor, Umwamua, had shown a similar shift in trajectory. Back then, the object was small, tumbling and completely dry with no visible gas jets. Yet it too accelerated slightly, just enough to throw off every model. Scientists bent over backwards to explain it. Maybe hydrogen outgassing, maybe radiation pressure, maybe even a fragment of alien technology. But no theory fully held up. And now with three Atlas, the same pattern is repeating, but at a scale that leaves no room for doubt. This time the object is massive. If a force is pushing it, that force must be incredibly precise and sustained. And yet the models are breaking down again. It's no longer about one strange object slipping through the cracks. It's about a growing pattern, a sequence. First came Umuamua, then Borisov, now three Atlas. And each time the behavior becomes more extreme, more unnatural. If this were a fluke, it wouldn't be escalating, but it is, and it's forcing scientists to ask a question no one wants to ask. What if this isn't a coincidence? Comet motion is simple in theory. Small bodies like icy rocks can be nudged easily by gas jets, but Three Atlas isn't small. It's a cosmic juggernaut, possibly thousands of times more massive than Oumuamua. To shift something that heavy, you'd need explosive outbursts from its surface, ejecting tons of gas and dust every second. But that's not what the data shows. The measured gas output is high, but not that high. The force is simply too weak to move this mountain of rock and ice. 
It's like trying to push a cruise ship with a garden hose. So now the physics doesn't just look incomplete, it looks broken. And in science, when all conventional answers fail, the door opens to the unthinkable. Some whisper of fragmentation, others of exotic materials or unknown interactions with the sun's magnetic field. But behind closed doors, a few are asking, is it moving on purpose? Not in the science fiction sense of alien visitors, but as a technology, a relic, a probe, something designed to move subtly, to blend in, until we were smart enough to notice that it shouldn't be moving at all. As the residuals continued to mount, astrometric teams around the world began to shift their focus. The question was no longer, why is it drifting? But why is it drifting like this? The deviations weren't chaotic. They were patterned, consistent in direction, mathematically elegant, and for a body as massive as three atlas, this level of controlled acceleration, without detectable cause, pushed the discussion into a space that scientists are rarely comfortable occupying. Intentionality? What if the shift itself wasn't a symptom but a signal? A quiet orbital nudge not designed to escape observation, but to provoke it as if the object were saying, here, pay attention, not by transmitting beacons or leaking radio waves, but by moving just enough to break our confidence. The orbit became the language, the drift, the sentence. It was subtle, yes, but in physics, subtlety is precision. And if the precision isn't ours, then whose is it? In the wake of this anomaly, scientific teams began doing what scientists do best, resisting what doesn't fit. Peer-reviewed papers danced around the core issue, using euphemisms like non-conforming motion or unresolved trajectory deviation. Internal memos from NASA and ESA reflected growing discomfort. Some analysts began implementing residual isolation protocols to separate the unexplained shifts from the rest of the model, treating the anomaly not as part of the data, but as contamination. That alone spoke volumes. When the data is clean and the math fails, the error isn't in the measurements, it's in the model. And 3ATLAS was becoming an unmanageable stress test for that model. This wasn't about fitting a strange rock into a familiar system anymore. It was about acknowledging that perhaps the system itself was incomplete. The last time this happened with Umamua, the world shrugged. This time the shrug is gone. What's replacing it is a growing silent dread. Just beyond the horizon of current observation lies the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, a game-changing facility preparing to sweep the sky with unprecedented speed and sensitivity. Its surveys will detect thousands, possibly millions of small objects in the next decade. And among them, astronomers now realize, will be more interstellar visitors. But here's where the real fear sets in. If 3 Atlas is any indication, the truly strange ones won't look like sci-fi spacecraft. They'll look like rocks. They'll move almost predictably until they don't. They'll drift gently, precisely through our blind spots, right in front of our instruments, following orbits that are just plausible enough to dismiss. Unless you're watching every decimal, Rubin will give us eyes on the sky like never before. But if what we're seeing now is just the tip of the pattern, then the real revelation won't come from what Rubin finds. It will come from what Rubin proves we missed. Behind the orbital charts, the mass estimates, and the spectral readings lies a deeper fear, one not often spoken aloud. It's not that 3 Atlas is dangerous. It's not even that it might be artificial. It's that we might not be alone in the solar system anymore, and never were. Not in the way Hollywood imagined with sources and signals, but in the quietest way possible, observation. What if these objects, Umwamua, Borisov, Atlas, aren't accidents but checkpoints? Quiet instruments scattered across the galaxy. Some inert, some dormant, some waiting. The evidence doesn't scream, it doesn't threaten, it simply misaligns just enough to raise eyebrows and then questions and then possibilities. And that's the part that terrifies scientists the most. Not the answers we don't have, but the questions we're only now realizing we should be asking. Because if we're being watched, measured, evaluated, then 3 Atlas isn't the mystery we are. As 3 Atlas moved toward conjunction with the sun, radio silence followed. Not because we weren't listening, but because we couldn't. The object disappeared behind the sun's blinding corona, placing it outside the reach of our most sensitive instruments. And it's in that silence, those gaps in observation, where something shifted. When it re-emerged days later, its orbit had changed again, subtly, precisely, enough to be undeniable, but still without visible cause. This wasn't just an object being deflected by solar activity. 